Hello everybody, this is Nino at the Nest with the fall of the 1904 turn of the Russo-Japanese War and Japan wanted me to uh, move north into eastern Manchuria. Uh, the Russians had four militia there. They moved in with two infantry and two art artillery. Uh, took, it all, took out all four militia at the cost of an infantry and, art and artillery of their own. And then they just moved uh, the, the four infantry and landed it in Korea. And they moved their cruisers back to the Sea of Japan to get some distance between them and the Russian Baltic Sea Fleet. And that was it. Uh, Japan uh, bought a tech dice. They only need two points. They rolled a three. So J Japan now has superior training and on its naval crew so J Japanese cruisers will get a plus one um, so they'll attack defend at a four we'll, we'll give them a slight advantage over Russia that attacks and defends at, at a three cruiser wise um, they paid to move up the cruiser and they bought an infantry and a militia put the infantry in Tokyo and the militia in Korea and that was it for their turn uh, for J Japan's turn. Russia, uh, they didn't attack again, anything uh, again. Uh, just um, moved everything east that they could. They railed an infantry and artillery to J Hole. Um, they finished construction on that fortification. And then they just put militia in western and northern Manchuria, a uh, militia in Jehol, and a militia in the south uh, Sahelin Island. And that was it for Russia. So, quick turn. Um, these probably all will be pretty quick turns. So we'll come back with the next turn, uh, New Year, and the spring of 1905. See you then. Hello everybody, this is NATO at the Nest with the 1805 turn of the Russo-Japanese War. And the Japanese uh, attacked northern Manchuria to cut off the rail access to well, Manchuria as a whole, but specific specifically J-Hole and they it was they moved in with uh infantry and artillery and it was defended by one russian militia and they took out the militia but the militia got a hit and in order to hold the ground they they you know that they had to uh, japan had to take the hit on the artillery so reduced it down to one infantry and um Attack wise, that was it. Uh, Japan moved those four infantry from Korea into eastern Manchuria to um, keep the rail keep the rail line cut, you know, so Russia couldn't move in to you know liberate eastern Manchuria and reopen the rail line. And that was it. Um, Japan. Uh, put out a, its cruiser that's been building, so now it's their uh, unequal numbers, three cruisers against three cruisers, and put out a artillery, and then another militia that they put in Korea. Um, Russia once again opting to just play defense. Um, all all they got to do is hold their current territory, and uh, they'll win. Uh, by a single point, and then if those cruisers can wipe out the Japanese fleet, they'll get another point for that. Um, and so they'll they'll win. So Russia can win by playing defense right now. So that's what they opted to do. Um, Russia bought a hospital. Um, and then um, just bought troops and moved everything east. Uh, they railed an infantry and an artillery um, as close as they could get 
Um, so they, as far as close as they, they could get is Cheetah because Japan has cut the rail lines. So Japan has effectively cut Manchuria off from Russian reinforcements. The only thing R Russia can put into Manchuria now is militia. So um, not sure if it'll be enough because next turn is the last turn. So we'll see what Japan can come up with to um, to p potentially win this. And we'll see if Russia can uh, hold the ground and win the scenario and and uh, see what the repercussions are going to be going are going to be moving forward. So we'll see you next turn with the fall of 1805 and the last turn. Hello everybody, this is Nato at the Nest with the fall of 1805 and the End of the end of the scenario in the war. So Japan made three all-out attacks. Um, Japan took its three cruisers and hit the three Russian cruisers in C Zone 54 and uh, destroyed the Russian Baltic fleet with one surviving cruiser. So uh, the Japanese Navy is victorious and has denied Russia that uh, points for having more ships than the Brit or than the Japanese. Then they made an amphibious landing in southern South uh, Sahelan. You know they landed with an infantry and artillery against two Russian militia and were able to knock both of the militia out with no loss to their own. And then they made an all-out assault in western Manchuria and uh, were able to take that uh, with two, two infantry remaining. And so that gave Japan three points and Russia only had, only had one point. So it was left to Russia to make all-out assaults on everywhere it could, so it attacked, well, it only had troops in, in, in position available to attack Eastern Manchuria and Korea. So Russia made an all-out attack on both Eastern Manchuria and Korea to um, hopefully force a tie. And despite the odds, Eastern Manchuria held. Russia failed to take Eastern Manchuria, but they did manage to take Korea. But uh, unfortunately, that was not enough to uh, win them the conflict. Japan ends the scenario with three points, Russia with two points, so Japan is victorious. Which is good because if Russia was victorious, then that would cut out a lot. Of, then a lot of the future scenarios would not happen. So, for the sake of showcasing the scenarios, it's a good thing that Japan won. So, what I mean by that is the outcome of this: Japan winning the war against Russia. Historically, this was the first time that a Asian country had defeated had defeated a major European power in a war, and the and it sent shockwaves across the globe. And the repercussions of this was it actually caused a revolt in Russia. Um, the people. Um, you know, Russia had just been thoroughly humiliated by Japan. Historically, Japan did much better. I mean, Japan just absolutely crushed Russia. Um, Russia did a lot better in this scenario. You know, only lost by a point, and they actually regained some ground and never lost Port Arthur. But, anyways, the revolt was put down mostly, mostly by the Cossacks, but the long-term repercussions of of uh, losing the war to Japan and then the revolt was it caused the people, the general populace, the um, 
peasants on up to lose faith in Tsarist Russia. Um, lost faith in, faith in the emperor, lost faith in the monarchy, uh, lost faith in the government. Period. And so this widespread um, frustration and and dislike of the government, the czar, and the monarchy is what created the fertile ground that would allow the Bolsheviks to gain power and popularity in the um, Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. And for people that know their history, they know uh, know that the Bolsheviks turn into the communists, which turns Russia into the Soviet Union. So, it can be argued that if Russia had won this war, it wouldn't have caused the, the such large-scale disillusion with the government and monarchy and the Bolsheviks might not have been able to gain such popularity and the um, Russian government, Tsar's government, might have been able to hold on to power. Um, you know, of course, you know, this is what if history, and that's hard to definitively say one way or another this would happen, but for the sake of the, the scenario that me and Viper are building, we'll go with that what if scenario. So, but, so, since Japan won, um, come World War, come the World War I scenario, we will have the Bolshevik, um, slash Russian Civil uh, Revolution and Ru we will have the Russian Civil War right smack in the middle of World War One. so that's um, that's what I meant in the intro video by this conflict will have major repercussions in the next coming scenario scenarios and th this is why uh, this this event Russia losing this war um, led to the Bolsheviks and the Russian Revolution and the rise of communist Soviet Union in Russia. So next scenario is, and this is, I know a number of people have been waiting for this, but the next scenario is World War I. Uh, the largest conflict since Napoleon and it'll be the largest conflict in human history to date um, scenario time-wise obviously World War II is the largest conflict in human history but in the scenario timeline World War II hasn't happened yet so the going into World War I at, at the time the largest most deadly conflict in human history and it will be pretty chaotic like I said because Japan won, we're going to have the Russian Revolution right in the middle of it, and the the smaller offshoot wars, so, you know, the Italian-Ottoman War, the um, Qing Dynasty Civil War in China, the Balkan Wars, you know, and then, you know, the Russian Civil War, and then the uh, Russo-Polish War, while the Russian Civil War is going on, and, you know, then Ukraine's revolt, and then Finland seceding, and the Baltics seceding, and just general mass chaos. So, uh, so you know, that that was it for the scenario. We'll clear the board and reset for World War One. Uh, looking forward to seeing you there. Hi, Axis and Allies players, and thanks for watching the Nest. Like what we're doing? Go ahead and hit a squat on that like button. Share it to your favorite social media. Want to see more videos just like this? Go ahead and subscribe. We'll have more coming to you right from Original Axis and Allies from Milton Bradley, Axis and Allies of 1914 by Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, Shapeways.com, and HistoricalBoardGaming.com where you can find all of your expansions and other pieces right there online ready for you. We'll see you next time right here straight from the nest.